and then the one that I want to share with you right now which is a great one to start with if you've never used rulers in your quilting before which is this 10 inch arc ruler that also has a straight edge to use on the other side which is where we want to start today um, now this one has great marking lines on it um, it has here um, on the straight side there is a mark for a quarter inch um, line and then there's one that's another half inch and then it has markings in the corners for 45 degree angles um, and then it also has on the arc side as well it has quarter inch and then another half inch in um, these are all guidelines that you can use to help you as you are quilting to keep lines and spacing consistent and then there's also um, markings that go across the ruler um, if you need those if you have a particular design that you need to help with that marking um, as well um, now what's great about all of these rulers is on the back side of the ruler there is this fine um, grip it's almost like a super fine grit sandpaper um, totally safe for your fabrics but it helps to make sure the ruler doesn't slide as you're using it it kind of grips the fabric just slightly so that and you put it on your fabric it, it stays where you need it um, until you're ready to move it so let's get started with this i'm going to work on this little quilt segment that i put together for us to um, show you how to use these rulers i'm going to start with this block right here and then do some cross hatching now just a few um, things to mention about my setup um, we have a great tutorial on the website um, the sewing by Sarah website on how to set up your machine to use rulers um, but um, just to mention um, I do have a ruler foot on my machine now my machine is what's called a high shank machine which means that the um, rod that comes down to connect my presser feet is a shorter one meaning it's higher up um, so I have on here I actually have a low shank foot that is attached with an adapter um, I also could have put um, what um, a, a high shank foot on here without the adapter um, if I'd had that available, all, all I had was a low shank foot. Um, my old machine that I have is a low shank foot uh, or low shank machine. So this ruler um, foot works on it without the adapter. Um, so you just want to get make sure you have the right one for your machine if you or you need to use the adapter to make it fit your machine. Um, there's also a super low shank one that's available. Um, so you have three different ones to pick from. You just need to, to figure out, um, from your machine's manual, what type of machine you foot, you have either a high shank or a low shank. Um, the idea is when you put this down, you want to be able to move the quilt sandwich underneath the foot so that you can move it freely and be able to move the quilt sandwich around where you need it to go once that foot is lowered. The other thing that you want to do is you want to lower your feed nogs. On my machine, I actually have a button that puts my machine into free motion mode. Um, sometimes there's a, a button on your the or a lever on your footbed. Other times you have to physically cover up those feed dogs. Consult your manual to figure out what you need to do in order to lower your feed dogs. Um, but um, we have a tutorial on the website on how to set up your machine properly so you take a look at that and it gives you some more great details on how to set that up but do not use these ru rulers unless you have a ruler foot on your machine because that is what is going to keep these rulers from getting underneath that needle and causing any damage to your machine you always want to make sure that ruler foot is in place first so I'm going to start in this corner of the block and I'm going to come down here and uh, I'm going to start 
on this side and the first thing that I'm going to do is find my starting place so I want to line my foot up I'm using this 45 degree line on the on the um, ruler and I'm putting it even with the um, edge of my block and I'm using this ruler to help me guide where I want to start and I'm going to line up the middle of that foot with the edge of the block. I'm going to take one stitch and I want to bring up my bobbin thread and pull it up so that I can have a neat start exactly where I need to be. And I'm just going to hold those thread tails so that you don't get bunched up and messy. And then I'm going to gently and slowly start and just move and keep that ruler foot and ruler right together along the edge until I get to the edge of the block. And there I am at the opposite edge. And I have my first line. Now I'm going to travel and I'm using the ruler to help me. I'm, I'm keeping it straight along the edge, quarter inch away from the edge of the block just to keep it straight. And that quarter inch is important because the ruler foot is half inch wide, meaning there's always a quarter inch from the needle to the outside edge of your ruler foot. And you have to keep that in mind when you're using these rulers. You always need to account for that quarter inch. So I need to go a little bit further because what I'm going to do is that quarter inch line on the ruler is going to line up right along the line that I just made. And I'm going to go straight back up to the other side. And there I am at that end of the block. Now, again, I'm going to keep my ruler there to help me go straight up the edge of the block. And then I'm going to, I'm going to go just a hair too far because my ruler is not quite touching the foot. So I'm going to come back down until they do. I'm going to keep, again, the quarter inch on the ruler aligned exactly with the line I just stitched. And I'm going to move my ruler and my quilt together to come back down this line. And you just want a smooth motion with both of them together while you keep a slow steady pace with your machine and I need to go one more stitch over and that gives me enough room to line that up now one of the things that you want to be careful with as this line gets a little bit longer is I always try to make sure that where I'm stitching is always between my thumb and my forefinger so I'm not stretching beyond where I can hold this ruler which means sometimes I need to stop and readjust in the middle of the line and that's what's going to give you better control of where you're moving like this line is going to get long and I'm, my thumb and my forefinger barely reach the ends of this particular ruler. But if I start here and I do part of the line, then I can slide it down and I can do the rest of the line. And I have complete control of the, mo the ruler throughout the whole line. That's what's going to give you good results and keep you from doing this or doing that part way down the line and having a wonky line. So you 
see as I approach my thumb, I'm going to just stop briefly and I'm going to slide my hands down and reposition and keep good control over the ruler and the quilt. And straight line all the way down. I'm going to finish quilting the rest of these lines and then I'll come back and show you how to do the cross hatching for the opposite way. Now that I've finished doing the diagonal lines in one direction, I want to continue to cross hatch this by doing the diagonal lines in the opposite direction. So um, I'm stopped in this corner up here so what I want to do is I want to travel over to this corner here so I can start doing the diagonal lines opposite direction so I'm gonna go just up the side here to the top and I'm gonna use my ruler so I can help get a straight line across the top right in the ditch of the seam is where I'm traveling. I'm just using the ruler to help me keep that straight and help me keep in the ditch of that seam. Again, remember I'm a quarter inch away from that seam with my ruler. Oh, and my thread just broke. No problem. Let me snip my bobbin thread. will happen depending on your thread and a lot of other variables when you're quilting of course thread breaks do happen sorry about that I think I bumped the camera while I was doing it tail a little bit so I can pull up my bobbin thread. Get to this corner I'm just gonna go ahead and start in the corner again as when we started earlier I'm gonna go ahead and take one thread or one stitch and I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread and we will pull those tails to the side as we start and again to get a line at a 45 degree angle like I want, I'm going to use this um, black 45 degree angle line. I'm going to line that up with the top edge of my um, block and um, I'm going to use that to give me my first line over here and I'm going to bring that foot to the moment and I'm going to hold my tails and I'm going to slowly stitch that first line. Okay. Now I'm going to 
travel across and then I'm going to use the oh, not quite far enough away yet oh, still not far enough away yet. there we go I'm going to use the quarter inch mark hold that and move everything together as I did before and there's our second line. I'm going to move down this seam. Nope, not quite far enough. Line that up on the line from before. And travel back. the seam like we did before and then travel across get that on that seam or in that seam line and Now, some people aren't comfortable having the ruler behind the foot like this, and that's fine. I prefer it because I like to hold the ruler with my left hand and move with my right hand. Um, if you're not comfortable with the ruler being back here when you do this, the other option would be to start your second set of lines on the bottom right corner of your block then you would be holding the ruler this way as you move across the block you would be holding it with your right hand it gives you vet better visibility to see where your lines are and lining up with your stitch lines um it's just a different way to do it so it's just a matter of trial and error to see which way you like it best and there's not a right way and there's not a wrong way. It's simply a matter of preference in which way you prefer to do it. I just prefer having the ruler in my left hand, which is why I'm doing it this way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this block out and then I'll show you how it looks and I'll show you some other techniques that you can use with this ruler. Now, I'd like to show you one more thing that you can do with this um, amazing ruler. It's just one of the many things that you can do with these um, rulers that are in this kit. But one more thing I want to show you, and that is um, an effect that you can get in the border of the ruler by just using a part of this curve. Um, I'm going to set it... Um, up against the um, border or here um, and I'm going to go down my border let me get set up here and I'm going to get started here right at the bottom of my border and I want to just start so that I can pull up my bottom thread. I take that one stitch and that allows me to bring up my bottom thread so that I can bury it later. Now I'm going to use my ruler. And again, remember I want to accommodate for that extra little amount that the ruler foot takes up and as you can see I'm placing the ruler along the border but I'm not using it um, to make a huge amount here I just want a slight curve again similar to what we did with the cross hatching and I'm gonna just 
gently oh sorry I forgot to put my feed dogs down that's why it's not moving gently along my ruler and I'm just going to use it to make a gentle curve and see that gives me a little curve there and then I'm going to move it again And that's something that I can repeat all the way up my border of my quilt. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to come back down. And coming halfway. And I want to And I just wanted to repeat that. Let me rotate that around so you can kind of see a little bit more what that looks like. And that just gave me a little bit of a repeat in between the ones that I just did. And so that gives me just a little bit of the design there. Um, but it helps me to be more consistent with my design um, by using the ruler so that I can judge where I'm going to stop and start, how high my um, arcs are going to be because I'm using the ruler. Um, and on that, in that case, just so you can see, I was using this top line on the ruler, the dash line, and that was what I was putting along this seam on the border and using the outer edge of the arc as my um, one went against my foot and those were the parameters that were helping me to judge the height and depth of my arcs on the border and then I would also repeat that on the other side using the same thing on the other side of the border and that would give me the same repeat on the other side um, and you can use that same principle on all of our other rulers um, with their various shapes and sizes to give you a whole variety of shapes and designs on your quilts. So, um, just enjoy and play and see what um, wonderful designs that you can get. Um, happy quilting! <laughs>